اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session we are going to look into bootstrapping. So how do we perform a bootstrapping in PLS SCM using the SEM in R package? But before that let's recap as to what we have done before. So let's open our file. So this is the folder or the project folder I created and this is my R file. Double click on it and your R file along with your project will open. Now this is what we have done up until now. So I'm going to just review it in the presentation here. So this is how you load the library, you load the data into this particular object using this function. This is your step one. The next step, you inspect your data as to everything is all right. Following that, we specify our measurement model through constructs function and that will take or further define each of these constructs as composites. Now, all this is then stored in this simple measurement model object. Now, be considered about your inverted commas, your brackets and the format because this is a programming language. A bracket missing is a syntax error. And following this, we specify our structural model. That is, what are the relationships in our model? So these are the path from vision development rewards to collaborative culture. Now, following this step, the next step is to estimate the model. This is similar to what we do in Smart PLS when running PLS algorithm. So you store your estimated PLS model in simple model. But here, make sure you give this function the data, the measurement model you want to specify, the structural model, the innovates, how to deal with missing values, and then the missing value. And finally, then you save your score or estimated PLS model, the summary of estimated PLS model into this particular object through the summary function. So you are summarizing the model results using summary function. And then you can inspect the summary report by just calling in this object as is. But if you want specific details as to maybe paths, maybe reliability or other details, then you can have specific output. Like I can have path coefficients here, I can have reliability here, I can have other information as well. So where is that other information? So now here it is, have a look. So you can have meta information, iteration, paths, total effects, all other information just with the dollar sign and then the sub object. So summary underscore model and then the dollar sign and then the object F square descriptives, whatever you want, all of it is available. Just the object where you've stored the summary like this and then the dollar sign along with this particular object that you want to show. Now, moving on, let's go to bootstrapping. That is the focus of this particular session. Now that we have estimated our PLS algorithm, we are interested in assessing the significance of paths, whether the impact of the independent variables on the dependent variable or which paths are significant. So we have to do bootstrapping. PLS SCM is a non-parametric method, thus we need to perform bootstrapping to estimate standard errors and compute confidence interval. The bootstrap underscore model function is used to bootstrap a previously estimated SEM in R model and we have previously estimated this particular model. Now the previously estimated PLS model, the object holding the PLS estimation is bootstrap. So what do you bootstrap? You bootstrap the estimated PLS model. Now this function applies the arguments as shown in the table. Now what are the arguments? Here are the arguments. SEM in R model. So which model you want to bootstrap? This is the model, the PLS model that we earlier estimated. Now what are the bootstrap samples? Now in this case for this particular session or for the rest of the sessions I'm going to use 1000. The normal recommended is higher that is 10,000. Cores and seed. Now the number of CPU cores to use when performing parallel 
processing. Default is set to null, which utilizes the maximum number of cores. The seed, the starting seed to use to make a random process replicable. Now the default is one, two, three. Now in this example, we are using 1000 bootstrap subsamples. However, the final result computation should draw on 10,000 subsamples. Now what we do, how do we do it? We first assign the output of bootstrapping to a boot underscore simple variable or object. Now this is your object. Now if you look here or in the previous examples or in the previous set of codes, everything or every time we run a function, we get an output and we store it in an object. In this case, our object is boot underscore simple. Previously, it was simple underscore model or summary underscore simple for summarization or to store the estimated PLS path model. So bootstrap underscore model. Now this is the function. So what's the argument? Which model do you want to bootstrap? I want to bootstrap simple underscore model. Now what is your bootstrap samples, subsamples, 1000 in this case, the cores null by default and this is default as well. Now, how do you do this in seminar? Let's copy this and I'm just going to put it in here. We've done all this and now let's click here and let's paste it here. Now, since I just opened this file, so I need to rerun it. It won't do it automatically. So let's first run all the previous one, run and all of it is good, no issues. Now let's bootstrap our model. So let's select this text here and let's run it. Now look at this again, errors. Now these errors are fine. You should know that yes, you are going to get errors. How do you solve these errors should be the main priority. Now, maybe sometimes it's that you have given spaces that are not visible to you, but obviously since computer takes spaces seriously, you might have an issue. So let's remove the spaces a bit first and this looks boot underscore simple is the object. That's fine. And maybe let's press delete here and then press enter. And now let's run the model to see if we get any errors. Now it's running. Now it may take some time. Now let's discuss the errors that we were facing previously. It might have been because of the spaces because I'm copying it from another format in another software. So this might be an issue. So that's the reason I just removed all the spaces and then rerun the model. Now look at this SEM in our model successfully bootstrap. So your bootstrapping was successful. Now, how do I see the results of this bootstrapping? Next step is we again use that summary function to summarize the bootstrapped model. So how do we do this? The summarize bootstrap model object that is summary underscore boot. This is the object that I'm going to create using this summary function. How do we do this? It's very simple again. Now I'm going to store the summary of the bootstrapped model. So where is the bootstrapped model? This is the bootstrapped model. Now this function using this bootstrapped model is going to create a summary, which I'm going to store in this particular object. And then I can call this object and retrieve a full report or maybe other bootstrap paths, maybe bootstrap loading, whatever I want. Do I want bootstrap paths? bootstrap weights, bootstrap loading, HTMT or total bots. We are going to use these later as well. But for now, let's use these. So let's go stepwise. Let's first create the summary copy and I'm going to put it here and let's run this one. So what I'm doing is I'm using this bootstrapped model and using this summary function, I'm going to create the summary of the bootstrapped model and storing it in the summary underscore boot object. Run it. All good. Now let's call this summary underscore boot object summary underscore boot. Just simply run it and it will give you all the summaries available in that particular object. Look at this, all of it, everything in there, bootstrap structural path, whether the influence of vision on collaborative culture. Look at this original estimation, bootstrapped mean, bootstrap standard deviation, T statistics, confidence intervals, good, significant, significant. There's no zero in between. So this is significant. Again, these are bootstrapped weights. We are not concerned about these for now. Bootstrapped loadings. 
and then bootstrapped HTMT. All of this obviously will come later in coming videos. But for now, let's say we are only interested in assessing whether the paths are significant or not. And in this case, this can give us that particular detail. Yes, it's significant. Yes, it is significant. Yes, it is significant. This is significant because let's assume I'm taking it as one tailed test and look at this. There is no zero in between. Now, if there is no zero in between, then obviously we can say that the impact of vision on collaborative culture is significant. And if it's one tailed, it is greater than 1.645. It is significant. So this is how you can interpret these parts. And in this case, all three parts are significant. Further, now this gave you the whole summary like this. Now I want to be specific. So let's say I want to be specific. So I select this and let me bring it down here. And let's say I put it here. Now let's run it. I want to be very specific. Now look at this only specific bootstrapped paths, nothing else. Again, you want other results. You can use all these sub objects to retrieve anything from the summary object. Now let's review the steps. What have we done so far? So you load the library using library function. Then you read your data, review your data using head function. Then you specify your measurement model using constructs function. Then you specify your structural model using relationships function. Then you estimate your PLS model and create a summary of that model. Then you bootstrap the model and get the results using summary function into the object. And specifically, you can have different or specific details through this summary object that you create through this summary function. I hope till now all these steps are clear. Again, this is a programming language and this will require you to practice. Thank you very much.